Hello everyone. In today's session, we are going to discuss about back propagation network. Okay, so it is a type of a perceptron network, like it is an advanced level of a perceptron network, I can call it. So it is a feed forward neural network. So you will be having a lot of neurons and the neurons are connected as input, output, it will have a number of hidden layers in between. Okay, and it is a fully connected neural network. So each neuron is connected to the next level of neuron as it is. See, X1 is connected to all the other neurons of all the next layer. And this XI is connected to all other neurons. It is a fully connected neural network layer and it is feed forward. The input feed from the input neuron to the hidden and then to the output layer. Okay, so this is how a backpropagation network architecture looks like. And the advantage of backpropagation network is like over a single layer perceptron, you have to understand this. See, when there is a very new input and output layer alone, okay, it is a fully connected layer neurons. If it is a fully connected neural network like backpropagation network, the actual parameters over here which is about to learn, the input is going to be standard, output is also going to be standard. Only the way that is placed over here right so this is the only parameter that is going to be learned in between you send the input and the output is going to be same we check whether it is error or not and we update the weight so that is how your perceptron network works right so here when it is a minimal layer of input single layer neural network structure the number of input layer the number of neurons in the or we can call it as a number of learnable parameters okay are going to be very minimal when the number of learnable parameters are minimal the learning won't be that much accurate okay it will be useful for a uh, lighter applications but when you're going for a higher level of applications it is based on the number of learnable parameters your learning will happen and the number of learnable parameters increases the learning that happens also will be accurate enough okay so we are going for a a back propagation network structure or a, we can call it as a multi-layer structure, multi-layer feed forward structure. So when the number of hidden layers are more and when the number of neurons in the hidden layers are also more, the connections will be clumsy. You will have a lot and lot of connections and a lot and lot of weight vectors in between. So it actually means that it is able to learn more accurate details faster than a single layer feed forward network. Okay, so that is one advantage we are going to have when you have a multiple layers in a uh, neural network structure. So here your back propagation network is a multi-layer network and it is a feed forward network for training. So feed forward network actually denotes it is a unidirectional structure. We look at the architecture from X1 the data flow to the hidden layer and from hidden layer to the output layer the data flow. It is unidirectional. So we send the input here and to the input and we calculate the output of each and every hidden layer's neuron and it is then passed from hidden layer to the output layer. Okay, so it is called feed forward of input. So that is how you have called it as a feed forward training and it is a kind of supervised training model. You know what is supervised, right? Like for each and the data that is given uh, to the neuron to learn, it has an input and the target also. So the input neuron is also given, the target values will also be given. So we first take the input values, pass it over here and we calculate the output and we compare it with the actual target that is needed. Okay, so we calculate an output value for each and every neuron of Y1, YK, YM and if it matches with the target that is needed, it is not an issue. If it is not matching, we calculate the error function. Okay, and the next value, uh, next process of this backpropagation like this, once you call, calculate that there is a mismatch between the actual output that we got and the target, we calculate the error value and the error calculation is based on generalized delta rule. So backpropagation network follows a generalized delta rule to minimize the error and the error value is propagated back. So that is why we call it as backpropagation network. Feed forward of input. And once we calculated the error value, we back propagate it from the output layer to the hidden layer and hidden layer to the output layer. So we calculate the mismatch between the weights, okay, or mismatch between the outputs. And based on the mismatch, we adjust the weight. So the process of your uh, back propagation network working the speed forward of input to the target pattern, we have an input layer, input values given, and output calculator. And then we calculate and back propagate the error. 
we check the difference between the uh, actual target and the value that we receive uh, the actual target value needed and the value that we received over here and we calculate the error and back propagate the error between output to hidden and hidden to input okay so this is how your flow works like and the weighted adjustment will be the last value okay so here you should know what is this input and what is this output so i'll just tell you an example input is all the feature attributes for example when i want to check whether i'll take an application of an, a medical diagnosis so when i want to check whether the person has a diabetics or not based on the input features and the features might be anything let me take that uh, uh, age of a person uh, his blood pressure cholesterol family history of uh, whether the person has a diabetics or not so all these are your input features and that will be your input neuron so the number of features you have the number of neurons in the input will be there and the output will be whether the person is having a diabetics or not so you'll have one single neuron there as the output and that predicts whether it is an yes or no the person is having a possibility of getting a diabetics or no so that is going to be your target okay so this is your binary input your input uh, your binary neural structure where you have only yes or no solution and there are some other applications where you have a multiple class labels given to check whether a uh, given fruit is an apple or orange or pineapple or something you will have a multiple layers or so multiple outputs there and based on the multiple layers your output varies okay our output cluster like the activation function varies okay so based on the input and the output pattern we predict which my, which activation function will be uh, suitable for the given applications and then we can proceed on okay so inputs will be the attributes or the input parameters and output will be the class label that is needed and it is a, a supervised learning model so input is already given the target is also given so we pass the input initially we will be having some weights that is given over here randomly we assign some weights and then the neural network works so we pass the input calculate output for each and every neuron and once the output is calculated between from the hidden layer it is then passed to the output layer and the output layer also will be calculating it okay so finally you are going to check with the error function of it okay so now uh, the weight between the input and output is calculated with v vector and the hidden layer and the uh, output layer is calculated with w vector and along with all this input output neurons we have one more function called bias it is used to stabilize the network so the weight vector between this input neuron and the hidden layer is denoted as from this to this the first neuron is x1 and it is z1 so it is v11 we know x1 to z1 okay and from xi to zz it is vij and from the bias we use this value as 0 okay 0 denotes it is from bias vector uh, oh, but, uh, sorry wait, vector of bias and similarly from z the hidden layer to the output layer we denote using your w as your weight vector so from z1 to w1 it is w11 from z1 to yk it is w1k so the first value denotes the first value hidden layer and second value denotes the output neuron okay so this understanding is very much important since while back propagating the error the weight vector should not change okay so this is the overall structure of a back propagation network now we know what is a back propagation net why we call it as a multi-layer network why we call it as a feed forward of training supervised learning and uses generalized learning uh, generalized delta rule and we know the working of it along with its architecture so in the forthcoming videos i'll just uh, give you an algorithm of back propagation net actual algorithm of how a back propagation net works and it is then followed by i'll take one single example and i'll show you how this learning occurs in one step okay thank you